Speaking of that though, you do a great job as far as where you've come from to where you are now. What's some of your secrets? How, how did you do it? Uh, boy, look, you know, I, I, same as yourself, same as everybody when I say that. I mean, I think it's uh, the reality is, uh, you know, we're all dealt uh, a variety of issues in life, I guess, and opportunities, and it's kind of how we seize to it. I think the biggest thing is, is one's ability to listen and then willingness to work and work hard. You know, I think persistence overcomes more obstacles. Of course, I was wrong in some areas in that. Mm -hmm. I could never really master calculus, but uh, yeah. got close at least to understanding it. So, uh, but, but I still stayed persistent until I was dissuaded that it wasn't really a calling. So you know, I think persistence in most cases will always get a person to succeed. You know, that to me, success is, is that continual march towards a passion or a belief, and you know, you know, again, if you work harder, and I mean, there's plenty of examples where you know people that just uh, you know really succeed by by, by a diligence, mm -hmm. and I think it's also you know I read something this morning of Warren Buffett, and he said you know really success is just doing a few simple things right, mm -hmm. it's it's good. Good. You're doing it right. but you do make a lot of mistakes along the way. All right. And how you, it's not how you fall, it's how you get up, basically. Correct. Because you're going to fall. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. I like that philosophy because it, it relies more on the individual versus, you know, helping everybody come out there, helping you out. you gotta, you got to dig deep sometimes. Well, you know that. We can, we can go and address, I mean, I think the reality, I mean, what I say is, I really believe, you know, people can, you know, there, I mean, there, there's times that people are quick to blame others. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you know, a good friend of mine always says there's the mirror test. Mm -hmm. And you look at it, and that's where you have to squarely understand your shortcomings and what's going to make a difference and move forward. Uh, life is a learning tool. Uh, mm -hmm. If anybody ever has it all figured out, man, they, they better bottle it and sell it. <laughs> I don't. I don't think anybody does. Um, who most influenced your life? A multitude of people when I say that. I mean, it could be my... Yeah, and then my basic, my instructor in basic training, my, my grandmother, you know, I just thought the world of, uh, uh, you know, I got to spend a lot of time with. He used to really have a practice of hearing her life and challenges. And, and I had an aunt who was also, uh, again, uh, kind of a, a guide my parents, my mom, you know, just uh, listening, uh, people I worked for. Mm -hmm. And so it's a variety. And, right. and I went to work very young and uh, had some great role models that time from sports so it's been a collective it's you know I can't sit and pinpoint and say just one mm -hmm. I've been blessed and I think the other thing has been the number of books I've read right. I love to read biographies I read I enjoy studying the challenges people have gone through to be successful right. we've supported it and when I said that the company that my wife runs we've supported that we've been a believer we support the county reading programs uh, I could share with you yeah, third grade was really kind of my breakthrough my mom insisted that I went to a summer reading program Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of one of those neat ones where you know uh, you were rewarded by stars yeah. for for a variety of things, and that's where I fell in love about reading about people. Initially, I can you know probably the first one was about Babe Ruth, okay, and you know, and, and just that, and then it led to um, generals and presidents and you know, selective individuals, and I've continued that reading. I find that interesting to get the insight. You know, my story is a little different, uh, but. I went to a local library you know, for the summer program. They'd actually feed you in the summer. So being from South Central, you know, Compton, free food at lunchtime is a pretty good deal. So I found myself in the library reading. You read a book, they feed you lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember reading a book about um, the Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci, uh, and just great artist. And I looked at the Mona Lisa and said, one day I'm gonna see that painting. And like four or five years ago, I went to you know the Louvre and I saw it. So well, it does because see, the mind is the most the greatest thing that we have. Right. Nothing can control it. 
you know, other than taking a life. Right. And I'm, I'm not convinced that, that it ends there. Right. And my belief actually says it doesn't, but, right. but it's the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. I'm mm -hmm. both in the room. So what drove you to politics? You were, um, well, public service, I should say. You were a very successful businessman and, and doing, doing a great job. And what drove you to this? Well, you know, I mean, when, when people say very successful, I, I take that as a compliment. I, I think we're componently a small success when you look at other, other people in the world. Um, really the desire to serve, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's been it. I mean, the reality is I think there's an obligation to be responsible to the entire constituent base and address issues of concern. A uh, big component of that is my concern about the economy, mm -hmm. my concern about the county, my concern about the state and where we're headed. And, and uh, I'm not a doom and gloom person, mm -hmm. but we have an out migration if we don't address and we don't fundamentally change. Uh, it'll be decades. It'll be decades before we get a chance if we don't start taking action now. So, what are some of your key objectives um, now that you're on the Board of Supervisors? What, what are some of the things that you really want to drive home or try to accomplish in the past? Well, you know, thanks, business. Our, we exist to provide you the constituent services, okay? Well, we've got to seize the opportunity to make sure that we're incorporating best practices and that we give our folks that work with us, okay, the county employees, you know, a good opportunity, a secure opportunity where they're satisfied with their jobs. But our in responsibility is to the taxpayer, the businesses, and the constituents that make up the entire county. What can be done with government, uh, government waste? Uh, most entities have waste in them, um, businesses, anything. So what can we do about, done about government waste stuff? Identifying it, uh, then you know, having, and I think we do, having a, an executive, an executive team that realizes that we have to strive for improvements. I think uh, you know, the recent years, there's been great strides towards improving the efficiencies of county government, and I think we're all on the same page to continue that. You know, I'd like to hear about that because most systems ignore the waste piece and they don't realize that just by addressing that small piece you can increase the, the efficiency of government exponentially right. you know and to the people so I'm really happy to hear about that let's talk about economic development and um, also um, what can be done to spur our economy in the county well I mean there's one thing you know collectively is we're meeting getting the opportunity to meet not only with county but within other governments within the county uh, or other would say organizations within the county. You know, I've had the opportunities to talk uh, with the district attorney and, and have the opportunity to sit with public safety. And it's that driving down, in my mind, how do we collectively get together? My question has been, how do you help us improve the business? And I can certainly cite ways that I would perceive, but that really becomes them. Mm -hmm. But I think if we're all on the same platform and if we're all asking and searching for the same common cause to improve the economy, to help the businesses here, to get them to grow, we'll have success. And that's a different dialogue from this point in my understanding. It's been had before from someone in my role. You met, mentioned uh, D.A. Ramos. Uh, I have a, we're going to be interviewing him in a couple of days here for our, in our community as well. But he's dealing with something with human trafficking. Were you involved in that? Uh, he's been a, he's been a uh, rock in addressing some uh, crucially wrongs in our society that have to be corrected. You know, the district attorney, and I say that, I don't know him well. well I mean, I'm, I'm new to the position. I find what he does and what he serves to the community is an, an imperative component mm -hmm. of growing our society because he's, right. the, he's the gatekeeper. He is the person that keeps us safe, right. and he's a component of us. Well, some of the, when I'm studying up on the district attorney's office, some of the, the programs they have underneath, violence against seniors, et cetera, and then, uh, the gang unit. Those entities really drive home what you're talking about as far as protecting them. Sometimes they're on the wall fighting the battles we don't even know. While we're sleeping in our beds, they're fighting battles like that. So they should be commended for what they're doing as well. I agree. Um, what's uh, some of the challenges in the county for the next few years? Well, I think, I think the challenge is going to come from the state, um, in my mind, certain certainly most direct, I mean, the direct, you know, if we're looking at the affordable health care that's coming in the first of the year, you know, the state wants an additional $300 million from the county. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinion is when the state takes a program, it's because there's a 
quite a bit of money on the plus side of their ledger they're going to pick up, mm -hmm. which means there's going to be quite a bit less that we're going to be given. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from what we've been briefed at this point, uh, unfortunately, you're going to see more than a doubling of the uninsured in the county. Now, you got to chew on that for a minute. Mm -hmm. More than doubling. Uh, now, this is, again, this is affordable health care. It was kind of our um, you know, end all to cure our problems. We're doubling. I, I just, I just figure out there's going to be a double moment of numbers. Well, you understand our base is, and, 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 I, and I can t probably take you through more dialogue after this, mm -hmm. but our base is about 140. It's going to swell over 300,000. Mm -hmm. This eliminates a number of safety nets that are currently in place. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and for the next three years, it's going to be an exceptionally tough, an exceptionally tough time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the interesting thing is, is as this new tax, and, and really it is a tax, uh, when it starts hitting that, individuals that are self-employed mm -hmm. uh, and the amount uh, they're going to find staggering mm -hmm. and, and it, it is and I mean I was you know I've been to Massachusetts to where again mm -hmm. you, know, you have to provide it at the year end with your taxes your proof of coverage if not you, you know, there a, a family of four is looking at a ten thousand dollar tax uh, without proof of insurance mm -hmm. that's going to be the end result about eight hundred dollars a month so if you have a family of four uh, combined income of ninety-four thousand. They're going to be getting about an eight hundred dollar monthly tax uh, if they're not insured, mm -hmm. uh, and that will be. I don't. They. they what well, we don't understand is is that going to be monthly, quarterly, or do you get to pay that ten thousand dollars at the end of the year? Then we can talk some more about this uh, offline. But uh, I hear what you're saying, and just I just in my studying of the, of the issues, uh, that individual may not choose to have health care, and then if something catastrophic happens. The system would pick it up, uh, the county hospital, et cetera. But in the new system, they would pick on their own. Right. Well, in the new system, you cannot, if you are without it, mm -hmm. you will then pay the tax. You know, there's there's not an opt out. Yeah. You, I mean, you can choose to opt out, but in Massachusetts, what takes place is when you file your taxes, you either have to show a proven coverage mm -hmm. or you have to pay you know, a tax. Okay, and that's it's the same. It's the yeah. same model. There's no, yeah. I mean, but 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 on this on this three year shift, mm -hmm. what's taking place is we're you know 160 thousand more people who are not going to have it, and that means they're going to rely on the county system, and the state's taking over the program. So, who's going to have the money? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a bigger issue right there. I, I do see the hole there. Uh, the state takes the money is going to be a challenge. Well, I mean, I, you know, there's. The, my main thing is really to focus, how do we first improve the climate to have the companies come here? Right. Because we create the opportunities, the other things really start taking care of themselves. If you know, we have more jobs that require training and pay a higher compensation, individuals simply find a way to get the education and rise. Uh, companies are getting extremely... Our committee wants to know a few other issues. Sure. And thank you for your time again for, yeah. for today, because I know you have a very busy schedule. Um, what can uh, what can be done to improve jobs? Uh, I think education is one of the keys. We kind of talked about that, uh, but some other things that we can do, and we kind of were talking about that off camera a little bit as well. Active about coming out, and, and and you know, there's a, there's a company in the Inland Empire uh, that has a component of their business that requires a two-year technical training. With the shortages, what they've done is they went in and hired. They literally went in and hired half of a technical class. Mm. Okay, so they're paying people forty plus thousand dollars a year just to go to school. Mm. Now that's where the commitment. Once they graduate, that they'll work and during their off times. But you know, that's where I see our need is. Our need is in you know, technology. Our need is in mechanics. Our need is in industrial electricians. Our need is in technical school trades. Uh, and really going back to a foundation, I think that you you alluded to earlier. And I'm sure that we both had you know basic. Mm -hmm. Written, complete sentences, addition, subtraction, right. division, multiplication, follow directions. Mm -hmm. Twelve inches is twelve inches. It's not twelve and a quarter. Yeah. Cut, you know, measure yeah. twice, cut once. Right. Uh, uh, these are the things that are needed. Uh, you know, we're going to pay more for a. Let me tell you, you're going to go in to pay more for a plumber and electrician at your house, and you're going to end up paying for uh, uh, a, a lot of professional service. Right. right. And then there's a fine line between that as well. I like where you were going with that because in reality, everybody can't go to college. You got to have a strong education system, and that's why we were kind of talking about why the Victor Valley uh, College situation is so important for us to address, deal with, get our hands 
getting their hands on. Because businesses want to come here, but they have to have an educated workforce. At least people who are technically trained so they can do the job. You know, so, you know, you, does you agree that as well, that a strong education system is important for our Absolutely. So you gotta, it, it also kind of, as you're saying, you know, it's, it's interesting. I got technical training before mm -hmm. I succeeded. Mm -hmm. And I got technical training to where I said, you know, it, it led to other successes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it doesn't mean you're, you know, you, you know my stepfather, you know, and I, I say this, um, interesting. If you have a trade, you will always eat. Right. Simple. Real simple. simple. He says, if, you're, yeah. if you truly have a trade, you know, I, I was brought up with that belief, and that was an understanding. Mm -hmm. And a trade, not a, not a, and so I'm saying that. So I'm a big proponent of the technical aspect. Mm -hmm. And then as individuals succeed, they can continue on. But education is. Mm -hmm. I think some of the challenges with the college, I'm, I'm not close enough to have that knowledge, but one of my understandings is you have a huge input. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we, we, we understand that. We're both in the business. But if folks are not ready to be there, right. And, right. And, and they stop the system of those that could be moving through much faster right. to succeed. That's not mine to manage, but you know, if I'm looking at it from the business aspect, I'm saying I'm going to change that input and address that in, in an efficient way, and I hope, hopefully there would be an efficient way to get it done, mm -hmm. and allow those that are ready to proceed to go unencumbered for that rapid success and get in those four-year programs. Right. And that's, you know, that's the challenge, and how you do that. I can, I can certainly look from far, but it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. There's some things we should do on the front end as well, helping the people in high school, all through the Victor Valley, get them the information of what it takes to go to college if that's what they want, and the information of a trade school or similar alternatives at the same time. Give them that information so they can know what path to take, because that lack of knowing what path to take leads to crime, drugs, teenage pregnancy, the whole other social ill piece of it. You know, uh, Rick, uh, Chris Pierce has really created a strong program. Good guy. Good the guy. bridge. Mm -hmm. and, and that bridge is just focusing on that. You know, it's K-16. Right. You know, so, so it's like, but let's make that connection mm -hmm. for our children to understand at the earliest age, here's the opportunity and here's the direction and here's how you're going to continue your education. Public safety is one of the most important things that you have going. Um, a lot of the cities up here are looking into a JPA so that they can um, try to pool their resources. Kind of have their own fire and uh, ship department. Yes. Any idea, any opinions about that? Or? Well, you know, when I say that, you know, I mean, I mean, certainly it's not, uh, it's not directly. My understanding within the communities is it's an economic. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're like everyone else, we're still in a declining economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing slight improvements, but by no means are we at a full recovery. We have great liabilities, uh, financial commitments that we have to uh, make, you know, still com uh, commit to. And that's a challenge. So, you know, not directly being involved, uh, but my understanding from what I've read and some conversations, it's, it's really a matter of cost mm -hmm. and uh, trying to figure that out. So I think, you know, municipal governments are, you know, elected and, and, and they're doing, you know, they're responsible to their constituents. Uh, my commitment to public safety is, has been, one, that it's a key component. When I look at the responsibility as supervisor, mm -hmm. you know, I want to enhance the economic because that enhances revenue, which allows us to grow public safety. Uh, I don't think a community will exist or grow if it's uh, not perceived as being safe. I, I agree 100%. Um, what makes a um, effective local government? An engaged, an engaged population. And it's really the opinion. And uh, you know, I can say for years that uh, uh, I, I think inherently we, we, I think inherently we really should be challenged to look closely uh, at those that we choose to serve and what are the intentions. And inherently, um, I, I would greatly encourage those that have businesses to be involved because, unfortunately, uh, overregulation, um, uh, the idea that somehow um, you know, we have some right, and when I say that, of, of taking from those businesses, mm -hmm. in the end, only run them out. 
and, and, and then we become non, non-sustaining. Right. And, and, and the state's a perfect example. You know, look, look at this Apple computer just is opening, bringing back from overseas one of their manufacturers. Mm-hmm. And where are they, where, you know, Apple computer. Now let's say that again, yeah, Apple computer, computer, California, Steve Jobs. Mm-hmm. Where are they locating that? Not in California. Not in any component of it's gonna be done in California. The entire manufacturing center is gonna be east of us. Mm-hmm. All the components and then the direct manufacturing. Their direct comment is because of AB32. You know, conceptually, we could you know look at the AB32 and then the component of carbon or, or greenhouse. Mm-hmm. Understand great in concept, but it's going to strip the state mm-hmm. of its ability to compete. And the reality is, it's not going to offer maybe uh, some issues here, maybe some benefits. Yeah, nah, at the end of the day, not because if I can take my business and move it to Arizona. And have the same manufacturing without the restrictions. Right. It may have done something here. What it's done in California is driven out that. And so we got to figure out what are the good components of that, and utilizing the best technology, but not strangle and push great companies out of the state. Right. Without jobs, there's no families. It's hell, right? Yeah. Um, what about the county budget? What's the latest? Um, can you uh, we're just we're, it, you know this is my first year. I, I, right. um, I'll say that. So I mean, it's our first delve. Uh, we're we're working with our peers to get a very different look moving forward uh, than previously. Uh, the budget has arrived uh, to us earlier. Uh, next year will be even earlier, allowing us more time to really kind of uh, review areas uh, collectively uh, and to hopefully uh, to find best best practices that'll result uh, with executive management concurring. And then taking our direction on those policies and, and bringing them down to the to the table or the exact savings. I think Mr. Devereaux is doing a great job. I've met him a few times, and he, he's a great manager. I think. Yes. Um, can you, the last last couple of questions. Can you tell us more about uh, what's being done to bring jobs to our community? Ooh, well, collectively right now it seems like uh, it's 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 two things. There's some direct outreach. Someone can talk to that can. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have an economic economic development group, uh, you know, they're going through the same thing that the RDA is doing. I mean, they've been stripped and devoid of opportunities. Uh, they're self-managing their budget. They're working creatively. One of the things they've done is gone out to companies, uh, allowing them to locate in unincorporated areas, and then they're doing a tax share. Okay, when they can. I mean, it's not always 100%, uh, but that seems to uh, give us some economic advantage to have companies locate uh, in unincorporated areas of the counties. But we're still working hard. Uh, we, you know, the, you know, the county funded the uh, uh, opportunity for the cities in the high desert just to come back from their um, uh, ex, uh, I'm trying to think the trade expo in Vegas for uh, commercial um, real estate. And um, so they're working, that, that was funded, uh, that 75,000 county game. Uh, and then collectively there's issues that we're working on. I feel at this point, with the line, a lot of what we're trying to do is combat some of the things that we see as uh, could be perceived as hmm, infringements on existing business to make sure they don't take place. So hopefully that they'll continue to grow. Um, is there anything else you want to advise our community about? No, I just always like seeing you. <laughs> There's not enough time. I need to do guys do a great job. Uh, it's challenging, and I and I wish I had more. I can't share with you. It's it's a. Uh, it's a, it's, 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 uh, I look at the staff, and you know, without a strong staff, you can't succeed. Right. Uh, because people are engaged, and uh, it's that responsibility that we enjoy to our constituents. Yeah, well, so, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks, Anything sir. I can do, I'll, you want to let me help out. You know, thank you very much.